how not to waste money on clothes, especially during sales. So sales season is here and I know how tempting it is to go out there to get a bargain, to buy more clothes, to fill your wardrobe with more stuff. I know it is extremely tempting and everything is made in a way to encourage a sale, to encourage you to buy more. But if you are like a lot of my clients who reach out to me at the beginning of our work and saying that, mm, Nina, help, I own a lot of clothes, I have a huge wardrobe, yet I'm always sticking to the same 20%. This is actually the real statistic. You may own a huge wardrobe, but wearing just a tiny percentage of that, the real statistic is about 20%. So if you're finding yourself in that situation and you want to change that, let's talk about how not to waste money on sales. I am going to be sharing with you four very practical tips, how to reverse these dynamics, how to get out of this vicious circle when you buy a lot of stuff, you own a lot of stuff, yet wear a small percentage of that, and how not to waste money on clothes, especially during sales. So uh, my name is Nina Walder. I am a personal stylist and a style coach, and I am going to be sharing with you the most practical tips, even though that is a very big conversation in general. Yeah, but we're going to start with something that is going to bring you the results here and now. I love an efficient wardrobe. I love to wear all my clothes. And now when I open my wardrobe, I actually wear everything out of what I have in my wardrobe. And I'm very, very particular and very specific about what I allow into my wardrobe. And I teach a lot of my clients to do the same. I've recovered actually from a situation back in my 20s, 15 plus years ago, when I was in the same vicious circle that you may be finding yourself right now, where I was shopping all the time. It was actually like my hobby. It was all in the hope, in the pursuit of looking great, being more happy with the reflection in the mirror. But when you don't have a strategy, when you don't have the shopping strategy, when you don't understand your style, then it's not going to change. Like buying more stuff is not going to make you happier or make you love your reflection more in the mirror. So let's have this honest conversation and let's dig a little bit deeper beyond this kind of surface level and let's help you recover from this vicious circle of buying a lot of stuff, wasting a lot of money and clothes, yet not getting anywhere with your style, because I know it's truly possible for you to reverse these dynamics. Let's get started. Okay, the first step that I want you to do is to actually check your wardrobe before you go out shopping there because hello, 10th white t-shirt or 20th pair of blue skinny jeans, right? This is one of the most common patterns I see with women is that you know what you typically wear and you're very comfortable buying a very specific clothing item. So like you're very used to wearing your skinny jeans or that you're very used to wearing this specific type of silhouette. So every time you go shopping in the hope of adding something new and inspiring into your wardrobe, yet you always get to buy kind of very similar stuff that you would have on your wardrobe. So one way to avoid that is actually have a clear look at what you already own on your wardrobe. And there are many different ways how you can approach that. So you can do like the big girl step. You can do the whole wardrobe detox, like big revision. And this is actually something I recommend to do every season. I do that myself. I encourage my clients to do the same. So before a season comes, you would go through your wardrobe. And most importantly, you're going to leave in your wardrobe only what is relevant for the season. So let's say it's summer now. So you don't want to go through your winter sweaters, winter dresses while you're in summer, right? It creates so much clutter into, in your head. So you want to keep only what is relevant for the current season in your wardrobe. And you also want to leave the things that you're actually wearing. No need to keep in your go-to wardrobe the stuff that is outdated, that doesn't fit you anymore, or whatever is the reason. So you don't want to keep in your wardrobe, in your go-to wardrobe, those kind of pieces. In ideal scenario, and this is actually what happens with me now, is that I open my wardrobe, I can grab anything. Like if I have zero time, or zero interest or energy to think about what I'm going to wear, I know that whatever I'm going to grab out of my wardrobe right now, it's going to work for me because it's for the season, it fits me. So I can just get anything and like my outfit is ready. So you can do the same. You can go through your wardrobe and make sure what you leave out there in your wardrobe is actually going to serve you. Or if you think it's going to take so much time, I have such a big wardrobe, it sounds like a daunting task, not ready now, I want to go shop right now. Another way to approach that is actually do kind of like a quick revision. You probably know that most of the time you're wearing just like tiny percentage of your wardrobe. Remember those 20%. So go and look through those 20%. What are you wearing on a daily basis? So what is your go-to silhouette? 
take a picture of that. This is actually a tip number two is while you're doing your wardrobe revision, you want to take pictures of what you have. Ideally on yourself, you can do like a daily OTD pictures for a couple of weeks because usually that's kind of a representation of what you typically wear. Or if it's too much or like too long, sounds like too long, then you can actually just take a picture of like what are those typical pieces that you're wearing on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. And you will realize actually that's not so much clothes. Usually like you have your go-tos and a lot of times they would be very similar silhouettes. So maybe very similar type of dresses or pants or skirts or whatever it might be for you. And I recommend for you to also take pictures, but also look back at that and try to see the patterns, try to understand, okay, what I already have in my wardrobe, like what I already have, what I'm seeing there, what are the patterns there, what I'm typically wearing. And then you may see like, especially when you take OCD pictures, you will see, okay, these are my pictures for the last couple of weeks and I'm seeing that mm -hmm, a lot of jeans taken out, no more jeans, don't need to buy another pair of jeans, especially if you have a goal of changing your style, maybe diversifying your style, especially if you find yourself in a situation where you are bored with your style, you feel like you wear the same thing over and over again, you know, kind of want to get out of this pattern. So look at your pictures and really trying to analyze, okay, wear a lot of jeans, don't need any more jeans which gives me an idea that I need to look more for skirts. So while I'm going shopping, I'm going to be looking for more skirts. And when I'm thinking about the skirts, what kind of silhouettes I'm loving? What kind of silhouettes make sense for me? Like, am I taking, am I cycling a lot, for example? So maybe midi skirts, maybe not the best idea for that. So what kind of skirt that could be? So I wanted to think a little bit more in that direction. So seeing the patterns, realizing don't need more of this and this and that. So when you are at the shop, you're not even distracted by those pieces because you know that I have a lot of those, not even looking in that direction. I'm gonna actually look in here because I know that I'm looking for something like this. I'm looking for dresses. I'm looking for skirts. That may sound a little bit straightforward, but that's actually foundation because this will allow you not to buy duplicates. This will allow you to bring diversity into your wardrobe. And this is actually like the little steps that in the long run are gonna make a huge, huge, huge difference for you. Okay, now imagine you're at the shop and this brings me to step number three. So when you are at the shop, you wanna be looking at your list, you wanna create a plan, you wanna understand, okay, I'm shopping for this and that, I'm not being distracted by that and that. And then you also wanna look, especially if you're in sales, a lot of times this is actually scientifically proven that we are just sometimes just being attracted by the price. We're not buying the clothing piece itself, we're buying the price. <laughs> so I want you to resist the temptation and I want you to do so-called a full price test. So when you look at something and I know the sale price might be attracting just a fraction of a full price, but then nevertheless, look at this item and ask yourself, would you have bought it at the full price. So let's say you're looking at a dress and it looks, oh, like looks nice and it's only 20 bucks, but would I have bought it if it cost like the whole 120 bucks? Would I have bought it? Like, what are your criteria if you're buying something that is a little bit maybe above your budget a little bit? So what is it that you're gonna be looking at? Mm, no, if you're asking me to buy it for 120 bucks, then no, actually, I don't like this pattern. Like, yeah, for the sales price, it may sound like, oh, that sounds like nice, but then for the full price, oh no, this pattern actually doesn't work for me. It looks too busy or I don't wear patterns. Or maybe this dress is nice, but I'm like I'm looking for kind of an office vibe dress, which I can wear to go to work. But this dress is like flowy, boho style, not my style at all. So it's kind of like a beachy vibe dress. So yeah, no, I really don't need it. So this is your full price test. It's gonna give you a lot of insights and I really want you to be honest with yourself. If you really want to break the pattern of wasting money on shopping and clothes, then this is the way to do that. Like really ask yourself, will you be happy to buy this piece at full price? If yes, by all means, that's a great purchase. And then if not, explore that because it's gonna bring so many insights for you. Okay, why not? Is it about the color of the feet or about the pattern or anything like that? So you are not gonna go for something that is a compromise. And this is the goal of this whole thing as well, that 
creating a style that you love, creating a wardrobe that you love, that is inspiring and fun for you, is a matter of being very selective of what you allow into your wardrobe. That's why I so much encourage you to like go through those steps. And it may sound like it's a lot, but in reality, it's very quick. And with the time, like it's going to be just like that. And you don't even have to like go through a full conversation inside your head. It's going to be like very quick and very natural to you. So just start there and you will see how your wardrobe is going to so much improve over time. Okay, and final first tip here is I recommend when you shop in a sale to focus more on staples and classics and basics because this is something that you're probably going to be wearing for years to come. You're not going to go for a compromise there. So know your style, know what is already in your wardrobe, know what are your preferences and direction in terms of your style and wardrobe. And when you're shopping for clothes on sale, it's really the best investment when you can get the pieces that is going to serve you for like for quite some time to come. So it's a good idea to shop for shoes and accessories, especially if you like leather, if you like like high, high quality leather, it's a good idea to shop for those and like get a good discount on that. It's a good idea to shop for denim if that's on your list as well, like get yourself a high quality pair of jeans or like denim jacket, something that is going to serve you for the time to come and it makes sense to get a bigger discount. So in general, it makes sense to look for those pieces that are like higher investment pieces because then you get a bigger discount and then and like it's something that's more like of an investment piece versus a waste of money. So for example, like leather bags, if you're looking for high quality bag, this is the good time to do that. It's a good idea also to shop, for example, for wool coats in summer season because wool coat, like quality wool coat is usually comes with a price, but then in summer you can get it at a discount. So I hope it's been helpful. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more of those in-depth stylist conversations, then like this video and follow me for more. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.